the FFS2000 is a fusion splicing workstation which is capable of performing all steps of the splice process. Strip, cleave, clean, splice, recoat and proof test. This video will demonstrate how to cleave stripped and cleaned fibres using an FFS2000. The fibre is cleaved at the cleave station. A tension and scribe technique is used to cleave the fibre. The fibre is first placed under tension. A diamond cleave blade then slowly advances towards the fibre in a pecking motion. When the fibre is struck, the scribe mark propagates across the fibre, resulting in a high quality flat cleaved surface. If you have not yet watched the videos about stripping and cleaning fibres using an FFS2000, click on the annotations or see the description below for links to view these first. During a cleave, the stripped end of the fibre is clamped in the cleave block between a lower and an upper cleave insert. The lower insert has a V-groove connected to a vacuum that helps to locate the fibre in the insert. To ensure that the stripped end of the fibre is clamped firmly by these inserts, it is important that the whole area around them is clean and free from debris. If necessary, use the blue toothbrush provided with the unit and a cotton-tipped applicator soaked in a solvent, such as acetone or IPA, to clean this area. The other end of the fibre is held in the fibre holding block. This consists of a U-shaped frame and a centre spring-loaded block. The fibre cleave lever and the spring are used to tension the fibre during cleaving. Before cleaving the fibre, position the transfer jig at the splice station. There are several alignment holes that accommodate the transfer jig situated around the splice station. Ensure that the pins on the underside of the transfer jig are parked on the platforms, also called bushings, surrounding these alignment holes. This causes the jig to be raised slightly from the top surface of the unit. Later, once the fibre holding block and prepared fibres are loaded into the jig, it will be seated in the alignment holes during a splice. Remove the fibre from the ultrasonic container at the cleaning station and visually inspect it to ensure the glass is clean and free from debris. Now move the fibre from the cleaning station to the cleave station. Ensure that the fibre holding block's fibre cleave lever is facing forwards. When the fibre holding block is placed at the cleave station, it will activate a vacuum that will help to locate the fibre into the cleave insert's V-groove. If required, a finger can be used to manually guide the fibre into position. Gently close the cleave block lid. There are magnets in the lid of this block that hold it firmly shut. It is important that when the lid is closed, enough upward force is applied to counteract the magnetic attraction, so the lid is closed in a controlled manner. Now move the fibre cleave lever backwards. This will cause the central section of the fibre holding block to relax backwards by a few millimetres and apply tension to the fibre. If the central section of the fibre holding block relaxes back too far, this may indicate that the fibre is slipping and so is not being tensioned correctly. The fibre will probably not cleave and this could result in premature wear of the cleave blade. Ensure that the surfaces around the cleave inserts are clean and free from debris and that the fibre is being located properly in clean V-grooves at the fibre holding block and the cleave insert. Press the cleave button to initiate the cleave process. The diamond blade will advance so that it is close but not touching the fibre. It will then oscillate forwards and backwards in a pecking motion, slowly advancing towards the fibre. As soon as the fibre is cleaved, the central section of the fibre holding block will snap backwards, moving the freshly cleaved end of the fibre away from the blade. The lid of the cleave block can then be opened and the fibre holding block moved from the cleave station to the transfer jig at the splice station. The scrap section of the fibre can then be removed from the cleave block by hand or using tweezers and disposed of safely in a sharp spin. The fibre fragment may be located at either the upper or lower cleave insert. It is important that this fibre fragment is removed to ensure that the lid closes properly for subsequent stripping and cleaving processes. 
Now repeat the cleave process for another stripped and clean fibre and load it into the other side of the transfer jig at the splice station. Once two stripped, cleaned and cleaved fibres are loaded into each side of the transfer jig, the next step of the process is to load these fibres into the splice station and splice them together.